a, how things evolve. Now, this is roughly the shape I figured I'd go for, but I decided I kind of wanted a square topped wing, more like this. Okay, now when I did it, you see this little piece? That was on the bottom of this wing. I did not like the angle of this. It was leaned way too far back. Well, if you have a situation like that, this isn't glued. I just tucked it into the slots I made. Now, I did widen these slots slightly, but you can see in more detail now the slots I'm talking about. You can see that they are pretty much perfect, guys. Okay. Now, this one still has to be widened out a little bit. So, this is where I was talking. You get your opportunity to, to perfect them. Truth is, they're bang on, so I don't have to worry. But I will when I widen this one out. I look very carefully, and if I even think for a split second it might be off in one direction, then I will do that. Now, in this case, I think the, the right one might be slightly, slightly higher. So when I do this, I'll put a slight downward pressure on the Dremel as I hollow out this little channel with it, and it'll correct that. Uh, and that's really easy to do. That's what I've done on the other two sides already. And it means that my double thickness of this slips in there perfectly, because this is actually two pieces stuck together. So I did all this. I set it up. I checked it for the angle. And at first I had it sitting straight. And I didn't like it. So I leaned it back a little bit. And then I leaned it back too much. And I had it like this. Well, all you have to do is cut a shallower angle here. If I start from here and cut straight across, it's a square. If I cut from here and cut straight to this corner... It's a much sharper angle. So be careful of the angles. This is why I say do it in paper first and lay it out. Now, I've been doing this for a while, and I'm pretty comfortable here. So the next step for me, if I can uh, set this up to show you. The next step for me, guys, is to take this, slide it into here, and say, okay, I am now officially satisfied Let's just say, now I may not be yet, I don't know, I'm picky, but let's say that this strikes me as the right tail shape, and it pretty much does, guys. I pretty much like this, but on a real aircraft, you don't normally see a corner here like this, uh, and so what I want to do is figure the point that I want to make my cut and then decide the angle I want this to be on, so I'm going to show you what I mean. I have decided, so I'm just going to make a cut here because I know when I'm done, it's going to be the angle I want. But you see this? Sorry. This line right here, I want my top to match that angle, okay? Or I can have it come straight across the top of the aircraft. Now, I'm also deciding the height that I want my aileron to be in the rear, so I'm going to remove this from the model, and I'm just going to take a look at it in my hands, and I'm going to take my scissors, and I'm going to put it on the line I'm about to cut, and try and envision it, and dial it in. Now look very carefully here, and make sure that I have it lined up correctly, and when I get it lined up right, you'll see that it just kind of has the right look to it. And it looks like when I set it on this angle... This is the important part. Do I want it to be cut like this? Do I want it to be cut like this? So it's more of a stealth wing look. But it won't change the size of my back aileron. These are all the little design considerations. Or do I want it to be a higher lift profile? Uh, sorry, a higher drag profile, which is what I want, believe it or not, for this model. And if so, where do I want this line to be? And a lot of times, it really is just by your... I. It's how you feel about it. So I know that I want this basically straight across, so I've just looked at where I want my line to be roughly, and I cut it, okay? It's not quite at the right angle, so I'm actually going to trim a little more off it, but better to go a little too little angle and then work towards it, because a lot of times you'll do that, where you'll find, oh man, that's a sick angle. I think I like the way that's going to look on the aircraft, and I don't really want to change it, and it gives me this big diamond and it's going to give me a very big aileron and a very slick wing, a very slick tail. Uh, that's not a bad thing. So, next we're going to cover how you go about making your ailerons. So, what you're going to do is you're actually going to take your hobby knife 
and you're just going to cut that. Put a straight edge like this onto it. And I'll just show you what I mean from above here for this one. So if I want this to be my aileron, it's the same thing. You can make the aileron any shape you want. The trick is... Here, let's do it this way so you can get a better view. The trick is to do it on the angle like this so that I'm looking at this aileron and agreeing that that's going to be the right size. So do you want a little tiny aileron or do you want a big honking aileron? That is actually a really important consideration. How big are your control surfaces going to be? And this is where a lot of people figure they can't do it and it's too complicated and all that stuff. What I will say to you is it's really not that complicated, you guys. It's actually really simple. Now, once again, I apologize, guys. I have a kind of a crappy camera. Uh, it's an old beat-up phone a friend of mine gave me, and I just can't afford to replace it right now. So uh, I have to do this video series like this. But now when we look at it on the aircraft, we look again, and I see... Does this look right? In fact, I'm making two tails right now, and I'm not sure which one is which. Sometimes in my head, I see one thing that I want to make, and the reason is I'm thinking of a wing for another model. So let's say I make this one, and I don't like it. Yo, it's actually a good little tail configuration. Keep it, and you can put it on a different model later. I have another model that this particular tail will actually look really good on, and it's just about the right size because I want a tiny little tail on this thing. Uh, and it's a much bigger wing than this, believe it or not. Uh, and I will show that in future videos. But this is how you go about making your tail. Now, for the horizontal tail surface, believe it or not, that's the easy one. That's basically a square uh, or a triangle on either side. And it's the exact same process. Make one, mock it up, put it next to it, look at it with your tail. Always do the tail section first because then you'll see the proportions that your horizontals need to be because that'll change with the size of your tail. Too big a tail, you need to adjust those because they'll create a little lift and help balance the weight of that tail. Um, so it's like little things matter. But in general, you can just go by looks, man. Does it look cool? And if you say yes, build it, my friend, for it will be fun. That's my philosophy. I build all kinds of stuff. Um, but look at that. It's looking really nice, really straight. I haven't even glued it in, but that's the whole point. I won't glue anything until I've mocked it up. This isn't glued yet until I mock everything up and I have it exactly the way I want it. Then I will start by gluing in the tail with as little glue as is humanly possible. I will use a tiny little bit of CA glue inside the groove step the wing into it where I want. If you notice, I've got a tiny little overhang to the front and a little overhang to the back. That's because I actually want it to make a smooth surface here and come in contact with that front carbon spar with no gap. That's a good thing to do. You could have a little gap if you want, though, and it won't kill anything. This is one of the great things about doing this. There are so many possibilities, man. Now, I am not finished. Uh, and I still have the horizontal, but this is the difficult part. So I thought I would show you in detail how that works. Uh, from the time I made it, here's the three pieces that have been shaved off of it. It's really, really easy to do. You just look at the angle you want it to be on. Look at other fighter aircraft. Look at other planes of a, of a similar wing type to what you're doing. So look at other square-winged aircraft. And you'll see that they usually have a tail something like this. Now... I could cut the back of that to make it less of uh, a long sticking out point at the back, but it's been my experience on a rudder or an aileron, that's actually a really good thing. That little corner means I can put out just a little bit of aileron if I want to, or a little bit of rudder, uh, and then it's progressively more and more into the wind as that tip comes over. It'll actually grab the side of the aircraft wind first, and the bottom of this will grab last, which means along this edge, it's progressive from the moment I start to turn over the wing. That front piece, the tiest piece, is actually furthest out. So it has effect a little bit, a tiny little bit, which in an RC is a great because I can just lean this corner out into the wind without leaning this part out. That's one of the reasons for this design. It's one of the reasons this is a long video series, guys. Even though there probably won't be that many videos in the series... Just to show you how to make one takes a bit of time. So now I've showed you how to make the tail properly. We've covered 
from step one to, I don't know, what's this, step five or six or seven? So we're going to call it step seven because you have to cut this, then you have to prepare the tail, then you have to draw out your tail, that's seven, uh, then you have to make it and test fit it is eight. Um, so yeah, there's that's eight steps and we're not done yet with the tail. So we've got another few steps to go, but they're identical to this, so I'm not going to show it. All you have to do is make the tail. In my case, it really is going to be exactly what this one looked like to start with, only a little bigger. It'll just be a straight square. Nothing special, not tapered at all, no angle to it, just like the main wing, and I'm going to give it a tiny little lift profile to, to add some lift to the rear because the front will just do this. I want it to do this. Come up and level. Well, if you build it right, this has a lot of lift. The whole thing comes up. This has just enough lift to balance it out. And the next thing you know, it's a rocket ship. And then the tail has to be effective enough that you can use it when you need it, but also gentle enough that tiny little uh, adjustments you make back here will make a difference. The more sensitive those surfaces are, you might think the better, but you actually want just the right amount of sensitivity, just like when you're flying in, in an RC or in a real plane, you are going to be adjusting these by hand. And if you don't want the adjustments to be crazy sensitive, a design like this is a really good way to go. You could put ailerons in this if you want. And my ailerons have VGs on them, which makes them air brakes as well. Uh, it's one of the reasons I'm not doing it. Uh, if I make flaps on this, it'll be the sections with the VGs and they won't go down. They'll actually go up and go down at the same time, they'll be split, uh, would be ideal for this type of a wing. But it has VGs along the tail of the wing. We still don't know if that's going to work, but it's okay, because if it doesn't, I'm going to trim that whole section right off, pinch the wing like this, and it'll just be a slightly less lifty wing, but it'll still be a really great wing. Uh, it'll be even stronger because it'll be glued together. Uh, not so much. It's about that strong now. But it will be just a little stronger. Now, here's one of the other things I wanted to cover. We have this. We're going to find the exact center of these two points and fold the wing up to create our camber, which is one of the reasons this thing is so great, guys. It's a really important part of the build. And then you need something to lock it in. Now, in the last video, I showed it upside down, but this is what it's actually supposed to look like. It's a little dog bone. You just tuck it, and it goes over top of the wing and holds this little rod in place. It's really simple. So uh, I just wanted to show you that real quick because that one piece has been replaced. But I will angle it and make it tiny when I'm done so it's just big enough to hold this. The problem is you don't want to cut it too close here or it won't have any stiction on this. There won't be any enough friction on the shaft to hold it in place. So I recommend you cut it this way and leave your length this way, which is what you see me doing in the other build. That being said, we're at 13 minutes and a half. I'm going to cut this, but she's coming along lovely. And when I'm done, she will fly. Keith out.